Hey there, DIYers. So today I'm working on a special project for my wife. She grew up in Ording, Washington, uh, just in the base of Mount Rainier, and she loves seeing Mount Rainier. Uh, however, ever since we've been married, we moved away from there, and she has been bemoaning the fact that she doesn't get to see it as often as she wants to. So, I decided to do a special project for her based off of an idea that I saw posted online by somebody else. What that other person did was his wife wanted a big huge picture of a horse but big huge pictures of horses are really expensive but he found out that he could get a shower curtain that had a horse on it and so i did the same thing i took a picture of mount rainier and had it printed on a shower curtain so here I have a very huge shower curtain. I printed it sideways, a uh, very huge shower curtain that I'm gonna be able to turn into a picture that we can hang up on our wall. This project is based off of a post on Reddit by user PowerCube and takes many of the lessons learned from his project and incorporates them in this one. All right, so step number one is to look at our picture and we have this big, huge picture here and I measured it and I realized I only wanted this portion in the middle. I need a little bit of space here because I'm gonna wrap it around the outside. So I measured it and I realized I want this to be about 60 inches across and 50 inches tall. Uh, so 60 by 50, that's what I want. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a box. I have some two by two lumber. I'm going to go ahead and build a box that is 60 by 50. And I'm actually going to make it a quadrant like that with some support beams in between. Once I have those support beams, I have my picture of Mount Rainier. And behind that, I have a couple of other shower curtains I picked up from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to go also put those behind it in order to help kind of make the process a little bit thicker and make it so that the light doesn't go through on the back side of the picture. Hopefully that will make more sense as we move forward. Uh, once all that's done, I'm just going to take all this. I'm going to stick them around our frame and then just go ahead and staple around the outsides. Hopefully in about an hour of a little bit of cutting and a whole bunch of stapling, we'll be good to go. The frame is going to be composed of these two inch by two inch by eight foot long furring strips I picked up from Home Depot. Total, they were about $2 a piece. I grabbed six. Turns out I didn't need quite that many. All right, well, I went ahead and I cut these two boards here and on that end to 60 inches long. These other boards here, I wanted them to be 50 inches. However, we have to account for this thickness as well. So I measured the board and it was exactly eight feet. Eight feet cut in half is 48, so that is close enough for me. I'm going to square these up and mount them together and then I'll worry about the cross braces and then we're ready to go. I didn't have any of the special tools used by window or painting manufacturers, so I used a framing square laid down next to the boards in order to try to get it as square as possible. Once I was done, I used some 2 inch 90 degree angle pieces of metal in order to mount the pieces together. Once I was done with that, I went ahead and strapped a tape measure across the board in order to find the exact center of, bo of the boards on either end. Once I had the exact center, I measured from one board to the other to see exactly how far apart they were. Uh, here I could see it was 57 inches, so I grabbed another 2x2 two two board and cut it at exactly 57 inches and then slid it right in. A couple of angle pieces in order to screw that in and it stays. I then do the same thing for the other side, measure to the middle and then this time instead of measuring from end to end. I measure from one end to the middle and then from the middle to the other end in order to get the correct size crosses. And I have the frame done. So up here in the corner I use these nice little angle brackets in order to hold it square uh, as much as possible. Uh, I did that for all four of the brackets down there or all four of the major corners. And then on the insides I use these uh, inside brackets. Uh, just four little, four 
the little screws two on each side and I use those on the sides as well as here in the center in order to try to keep everything as strong and square as possible. So now the next step, I'm going to go ahead and sand all this in order to make it nice and smooth and then we're ready to start covering. All right, so I went ahead and I sanded off all of these corners here and all the edges. I'm not necessarily looking to for too fine of a finish. That's why I just used a, an 80 grit sandpaper. Uh, ultimately, what it is is these furring strips are very raw. And we can see over here, for instance, on this piece on the back, well, there's a lot of loose pieces there. And we're not really holding this together with very strong material. So I just wanted to make sure that all of these were soft so that when I strap the uh, shower curtain around it, it won't rip. So next step, I have some inner tubes from bicycles. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to strap these around here in preparation for the material, just one, one more layer to keep it from ripping. All right, as you can see, I got ahead and put the inner tube all the way around the side of the frame here. Uh, again, the idea is just we've got some sharp edges and the rubber inner tube will keep them softer and won't hopefully won't poke anything on its way. So next and finally is I've got these two shower curtains here. These are going to be my backdrop. So I'm going to put the white one down and then the blue one just because I like the blue better. And if anything shows through, the blue is good. And then I'm going to put the mountain top uh, on top of all that. So I'll have three whole layers. And then it's just a matter of going around the edge. Staple, 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 staple like crazy. And we should have a final product. I hung up the curtains and made sure that they were level with regards to the frame. And then I started stapling along the back on the top side only. Once the top side was done, what I did was I flipped the whole thing upside down 180 degrees and then I carefully pulled on the shower curtain in order to make it as tight as possible and stapled along the bottom. Once that was done, I then turned it onto one side, gently pulled, stapled along that side, and then finally flipped it over to the fourth side, pulled, and stapled along the back of there as well. Once it's all done, I went ahead and hung it up and it looks great. There's still a few wrinkles that are in there that I could have worked out with a steam iron, but I think they'll work themselves out over time. 